This recording is a second example of looking at a trigonometric integral where the integrand is a product of an even power of sine x and an even power of cos x. In particular, in this case, we're going to look at the integral of sine to the 4x cos squared x dx. And when we're having a look at this, the following identities are re useful in reducing exponents m and n when we're looking at integrals of this general form, with both the powers being even. So let's see which ones of these three identities are going to help us out in this particular example. First thing to notice here is that the power to which sine x is raised, namely the power of 4, is 2 more than the power to which cos x is raised. So let's try splitting off sine squared x to allow for that difference in the powers, so that we're then left with sine squared x times cos squared x here. Now what? How does that help us? Well, it suggests that this part here, the sine squared x part, we would be able to replace using this identity. So let's try that. Replace that with a half, 1 minus cos 2x. What about this next part here, though? What was the advantage of leaving this part with sine and cos x to the same power? Well, sine squared x cos squared x, that's the same as sine x times cos x squared. And once we do that, we know that we also have an identity which could help us here. In particular, sine x times cos x is equal to a half sine 2x. So we're now going to have a half sine 2x squared. And this will be the new form of the expression for our integral. Now what? Well, when we're having a look at this, this first part here will become a half minus a half cos 2x. If we multiply through the brackets by a half, this bit, a half squared, is a quarter. So that will be multiplied by a quarter sine squared 2x. Then what? Then if we multiply these terms together, we'll get 1 eighth sine squared 2x. And then minus, and again here we're going to get an eighth, but in this case it'll be times cos 2x sine squared 2x and we're still integrating this whole expression with respect to x. And we can actually split this up into two separate integrals. We can also take constants outside the integral sign in each case, so that we can rewrite this as an eighth times the integral of sine squared 2x dx minus one eighth times the integral of, and I'm just going to write these the other way around for convenience, soon it'll become clear why, sine squared 2x cos 2x dx. Then we can deal with each of these two integrals in turn and then combine those to get the final answer. So let's consider these two integrals in turn. Now this first part here 1 eighth times the integral of sine squared 2x dx. This is very similar to what we found in the previous example on integrating products of even powers of sine and cos functions. In that recording, we found that, in fact, the integral of a quarter times sine squared 2x dx was equal to x divided by 8 minus 1 on 32 sine 4x plus c. We'll call that c1 there for convenience. Therefore, it follows that 1 eighth times the integral of sine squared 2x dx must just be a half of that result. That is, it must be x divided by 16 minus 1 divided by 64 sine 4x plus a constant. What I want to spend more time on is focusing on how to deal with this second part then, the integral of sine squared 2x cos 2x dx, which is also multiplied by 1 eighth here. 
So let's now focus on that part. So this is the bit then we're going to now focus on. 1 eighth times the integral of sine squared 2x cos 2x dx. What do we do with this? And remember that when we're saying sine squared 2x, that's just another way of writing sine 2x all squared. And let's have a bit of a think about the derivative of sine 2x. The derivative of sine 2x is actually 2 cos 2x, which is a constant multiple of the cos 2x here. That is suggesting that integration by substitution will in fact be the best way to approach integrating this expression. In particular, if we let u be equal to sine 2x, du dx is 2 cos 2x, so therefore du is 2 cos 2x dx. When we're then starting to rewrite our integral, we now have 1 8 times the integral of u squared. But because we just have cos 2x dx here, rearranging to make that the subject, we find that is actually a half du, meaning that we are working out 1 8 times the integral of u squared a half du. We can take that half out the front as well, an eighth times a half, that's just 1 16th. So we now have the 1 16th times the integral of u squared with respect to u, which just becomes 1 16th times u cubed divided by 3 plus c when we integrate that expression. Then we can simplify this a bit further and substitute back for x. 1 16th times 1 third is 1 on 48. u is equal to sine 2x, so u cubed is just sine cubed 2x. So this becomes 1 48th sine cubed 2x plus another constant. And strictly speaking, I'll just give that another name, c2, let's say, for that constant. Therefore, 1 8 times the integral of sine squared 2x cos 2x dx is 1 48 sine cubed 2x plus a constant that I've called c2. And at this stage, it's worth recapping what else we've found. This was the other result we found. The 1 8 times the integral of sine squared 2x dx was x on 16 minus 1 on 64 sine 4x plus another constant, which I'll call c3 here. But how did all of this fit together? Because remember, originally what we were actually trying to find is this, the integral of sine to the 4x cos squared x dx. In actual fact, this is what we had. The integral we were looking for was equal to 1 8 times the integral of sine squared 2x dx, which we know is equal to this, minus 1 8 times the integral of sine squared 2x times cos x. 2x dx, and we know that that integral is equal to that result. So therefore, finally, putting it all together, the original integral we're looking for, which was the integral of sine to the 4x cos squared x dx, is simply going to be this one. So x on 16 minus 1 on 64 sine 4x, we'll just leave that constant alone for the moment, come back to that, minus this result, so minus 1 on 48 sine cubed 2x. And on the end we'll have plus c3 minus c2, which is just another constant which I'll call c. So this would be our final result for the integral we started with. So it's easy to get caught up a bit in all of the steps. How do we proceed with something like this? Well, the main thing to remember is that because we're dealing with an integral that's a product of even powers of both sine x and cos x, these identities or some of these identities are what are helpful initially. And it's then pretty much a matter of splitting it up progressively to get the required result. Often in these cases, integration by substitution will also play a useful part.